Coming to you from Crash Studios in Music City, USA, Nashville. This is the Rich Redman Show. On this episode, teacher, entrepreneur, and drummer for Collective Soul, Johnny Rap. And now, Rich Redman. What is up, everyone out in podcast land there? Rich Redman here. It's that time. Yep. Another episode of the Rich Redman Show where we talk all things music, motivation, and success. I'm talking to authors, actors, comedians, producers, musicians, drummers. I know lots of drummers. It is a worldwide fraternity. Jim McCarthy joining me. Jim McCarthy, voiceovers.com. What's going on, buddy? Oh, the same old stuff. How about you? Yeah, you're producing your 15 podcasts and doing hamburger and steak voiceovers for people. That's right. Constantly. <laughs> if you like this company, press one. To speak with an operator, press two. That kind of thing. That's like the. That's, that's kind of like uh, the drumming version of that would be like playing "Girl from Ipanema" at like a bar mitzvah, like every weekend. It's it's the Sweet Caroline uh, bar band song of voiceovers. People love that Sweet Caroline. I remember I was yeah. in the house band at the Tin Roof in the year two thousand, and I was wearing like. Um, Button up Hawaiian shirts and playing all those types of songs. I, I'm sure our guest today remembers that. He probably stopped by, sat in, played a couple songs. But now, Jim, we're we're both fans of this guy, and we're gonna we're gonna catch up in a public forum here because some years have gone by. I haven't seen this young man, but he is an American drummer, author, inventor, teacher, and for the last ten years, the drummer for the classic rock band collective soul our friend johnny rap is it classic rock now it's already classic in my mind <laughs> classic I, I think rock i mean i think classic rock i think skinnered and well you know early van halen i mean they're probably getting some not uh, some play on those kind of like jack fm stations and then they are classic rock yeah. right or then the yeah. pop crossover stuff too right johnny yeah. I think it's okay. I'm not yeah, even kidding. Alternative rock. We get we get put into and again, remember those guys 25 years doing it. Me 10, yeah. really like, like a family to me. And I think that it's just you get they had some amazing hits, so therefore they become classics. So let's just. Well, they're, cl yeah. they're classic in my mind. I mean, 25 years is a fantastic run for anything, but to be an American rock band and survive the changes in, I mean, what is that? The five presidencies and more six presidencies and, and just going with the flow and staying relevant and continually pushing. And of course, when you have a workhorse killer drummer back there in the in the boiler room man making it all happen dude congratulations i don't know where those 10 years went man how can that possibly be it's so weird i, I would say that you know you and i spoke at pas i remember you said we're doing it and i know what you meant was we had such a short time to catch up with and yeah. i probably had that same look on my face of like only because that's my my main am I am, am I doing it like and that's not to be negative it's just a, a reality check of like I feel like it's just been this this you know just a roller coaster and I don't know where the 10 years went I know that for me it has been an exciting 10 years because that let's see what where are we at yeah we're 20 which is <laughs> should know that by now but in that time 2009 to now it's just been a, uh, a change of life completely for me because uh as you knew, when I was in Nashville, I was married. Now I'm remarried happily. And it's just no disrespect to that past relationship, but it was a completely different life. And, uh, and now I feel like I'm finally, like, fantastic. I'm really you shed really your skin many times, and, and, and you're reborn. I mean, I mean, look at these credits. I mean, we were sitting around thinking, me, you, Jim Riley, all kind of got to Nashville around the same time, 1996, 90, 1997. I would say that we had fire in our eyes. We were full of piss and vinegar. We had a lot to prove. You're like, you're like an international clinician. Like, I want a piece of that. And I was playing some sessions. You're like, I want a piece of that. You got your chocolate in my peanut butter. You got your peanut butter in my chocolate. And like everybody okay. did well. I mean, Jim's celebrating 20 years with the Rascal Flats, 10 years with you. I've been playing with Al Dean for 21 years. Like, what? Yeah, yeah. I can remember vividly, um, and this is, I hope you guys know that I'm just totally transparent all the time, and I remember Jim. You really uh, are. Coming into, you know, Jim, when we were doing stuff, and all of us trying to, like, get our feet wet with yeah. uh, 
things like you had ideas that you know your vid sigs uh, and p- people that don't know it is still a very honest look at like artists and the way you did that was amazing it was ahead of its time and then mm-hmm. uh, rich you and i speaking outside of soundcheck which those of you that don't know that's in nashville and at the time was owned by bob thompson and uh his wife tony and and you'd go in there and it would be everybody from i mean you'd see tim mcgraw pull up in a weird convertible corvette with with his drummer thunder mason or yeah yeah billy and you're coming back from lunch and you'd be like why can't i have a gig like that and then you'd hear you know somebody in the room doing backup vocals you're like holy crap and i had a stick office there for my drumstick company and no one knew i played drums it was a very that, that, weird. Yeah, that's an interesting time, but I mean, but that's where you get the inventor thing from. I mean, it's like you are really an entrepreneur, man. You're like a businessman. You had your own drumstick company. Is there a version of it now? Is it have? I was an endorser. Like you were, you were giving me dead trees. It was awesome. <laughs> well, you know what's cool, and, and and we all know each other, but that is true, Rich. The the one thing that I thought was a, a, a cool thing is. You guys all supported me. There was one time, if you remember the softball game? And we totally did the old school softball game, artist softball game. Yeah. And I, w- I somewhere have photos of that, but I don't think people would believe me if you saw the number of star, I know it's kind of a cheesy word, but star world-class drummers that were utilizing our sticks. And you were one of them. And it's amazing. And I'll never forget Pat Brown calling me and going, I don't mean to be rude, but if you guys are not in business anymore, I'm taking back all the artists you stole. And I'm like, okay. No, 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 and, and, and Pat and I are super good friends. And Sure, sure. And that, the, He's a pilot. He's a pilot, right? Flies airplanes, doesn't he? I've actually got to go from somewhere to Dallas in his little Cessna, probably naming the wrong kind of aircraft, but you know what I mean? It was amazing. Yeah. Pat was yeah. a pilot. And at the time, uh, higher up in, in Promark, you know, many times and as i said i'm being a little lenient because i just for, i tend to forget stuff and and i think the idea of you're saying rascal flats and yourself i remember jim riley going man i think i'm gonna and this is if he was listening i don't want this to come off like condescending or wrong it's absolutely awesome but this is how new stuff was in the stick office if one of you guys would come in and we'd hang for a minute it would be words about what was going on and at the time i didn't even know what rascal flats meant what what it what he was like i think i'm going to start working with this band called rascal flats and i remember there was a you know promo cd and it wasn't even hearing it but you have to which admit one's rascal that, say it again which one's rascal yeah steve flats you know yeah, it's like, it was a guy or uh right. silly yeah. rascal yeah. yeah. So what was going through your mind when you were looking at the CD? Is that, is that really, uh, this is lame. This is lame. Remember, it was not played. It wasn't played. I didn't understand the name. Uh, and then I thought, because you see the packaging and it's a promo pr- promo CD, you don't know if it's going to make it or not because, right I mean, this is no BS. It's the same thing. It's, so I'm thinking that's awesome. Awesome, but who would have known it would have been as huge as it is now? And it's the same thing with coming down. Uh, I'm going to mess it up only because I now live in 465 land, but over in Nashville, help me out. 445. 440, yeah. 440. Yeah, yeah. John, Johnny's in Indianapolis right now, guys. So Yes. So 440 coming in where Murfreesboro Road exit used to be just a ramp before that dude blew his arm off when they tried to. Did you hear that story where they no. tried to? No, it doesn't matter. We'll get this ADD kicking in. But we got the 440 come by, and it says so-and-so. I'll never forget this. True story. Please welcome new artist Blake Shelton. And I'm all just <laughs> driving into town. Who would have known? Because they would do that a lot, guys, right? They'd be like, you know, uh, so-and-so, congrats on hit single. You know, yeah, I mean, 90% part. of the acts aren't going to make it. I mean, I'm looking at this. You, the, you and I share some credits. We both did some playing with Hank Williams the Third, which are there are tons of stories about. And we both did some time with Dina Carter. We both did some time with Mindy McCready. Um, Rascal Flatts made it. Shadaisy did not. Damn. But they did for a second, sort of, right? Right, and then something yeah. something always happens. Somebody gets pregnant, the band implodes, the label goes away, they have a change of heart. I mean, 90% of the time, this is what is going to happen. So to beat the odds and actually 
hitch your drumming wagon to an act like Collective Soul, where everybody knows every word to every song. You got somebody setting up your drums. There's a cold water with the top twisted off, just the way Johnny likes it. And then, you know, whenever, sometimes I feel like an asshole like when I'm like, it's a, I say, Johnny, it's really hot out there. Fans on three, you know, because it goes one, two, three. And I'll go, hey, Johnny, it's, it's cool. Fans on two tonight. You know what I mean? But that's a cool thing, you know? Cool thing. And in your case, um, with Johnny, I know who you're speaking of, obviously. Uh, obviously, I mean. And that's, uh, he's obviously a great player himself, but that's his role. Yeah. Of the job. Like, it's a job. So it's not like some condescending. That's, oh, just, yeah. that's the same thing with uh, the guys who are wanting some sort of. Uh, different thing on stage and you want this on stage and I know thank you. Yeah. you know I mean? like, it's, it's a legit question. No, but you did it. You get to go out there and play all those hits. What's your favorite song to play out of the catalog? I mean, because of the Nashville days of Lightning 100 and hearing, um, I remember hearing December and just being like, what? This is a great, great song and track and Shane Evans. And so I still love that time of night when that comes on uh, nice. or you know, on the set list. And, I love it, but I, I love why part two. Um, you, you, it's kind of, I'm just not endless, but, and then sometimes with world, world, I know, like I'll look and be like, very weird. Like Ed and I are like brothers, you know, and he's such a good friend. And, but there's definitely a time per night where I'm like, oh, that's that dude right there that I that's love. That's that star. Like we were just like, you know, playing Tetris backstage, and and, and and he's a superstar. So is that a, an Atlanta band still? Is everybody living in Atlanta or? Well, right now, only uh, Will, the bass player, and so the three original members, Will Turpin on bass, and then uh, and Will's the one that got me uh, introduced to the band through a mutual friend, Jen Lowe. We can talk about that. But, Jen, so, the, the, the percussionist. Yes, yes. Awesome. Yeah. And that's, it's, a, it's almost a story that you'd be like, that's usually not how it happens. In fact, I didn't think it would. Will, and then it lives in Atlanta, near, near Ed, and then Ed is also in Atlanta, but then Dean is now in San Diego. Oh, nice. Ed's brother and uh, rhythm guitarist. And then Jesse is in Nashville. So Jesse Triplett has been seven years or so uh, lead guitar. And um, yeah, so it's a trip going to Jesse's because I'm like, there's the Red Lobster I used to work at. There's the, you know, there's Casa Fiesta that I used to like. Wait a minute. Did you work at, you worked at the Red Lobster off of Bell Road in Antioch? Two of them, two of them. Before it was, uh, yes, the Bell Road was my final before being able to get into touring and get the sticks off the ground. Absolutely, that was my most horrific, but eye-opening and, and what do you call it, uh, brain it like, gig. I you mean, know? but but that is, uh, kids, are you listening out there? Yeah. Are you got, like, cause I raked leaves, I shoveled snow. I always had the hustle when I got to Nashville. I parked cars, I waited tables. Um, at Pargo's, which is next to the Bookstar on West End Avenue, is now a Walgreens. And then I was a substitute teacher. And these are the things that you do yes. because you have to until drumming, you know, pays. The first couple of years in Nashville, I mean, my tax guy was like, you are living on poverty. Sure. And I'm yeah. like, yeah, yeah, ramen noodle. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's exactly right. I'll tell you what the other thing is. Red Lobster, for example, uh, you mentioned uh, substitute teaching. My background, my parents wanted me to get like the music ed degree, so I did. So I stayed an extra year. From to, Berkeley. Yeah. So it's to, a five-year degree to get the music yeah, ed? Unfortunately, everyone's like, oh, it took you five years. I'm like, hold on a minute. I know people make the joke, if you stay at Berkeley, you're never going to make it as a pro. You got to fail. <laughs> right. Well, that's all cool. I did music ed, learned a lot. And it actually did start to work for what I do now or what I did with like Roland and whatever for public speaking because there's a lot of your teaching. But sure. I, I have a joke because you're teaching in public in front of a large number of people. Yep. And I turned down, I left uh, Brookline, Massachusetts. I turned down a teaching job there. And it was very strange because I know you get this. You guys get this. They're like, we'd love for you to take over the music. You're all set. I'm retiring. Let's do it. I can't. I need to go. I got a tour. You got to be kidding me. I'm like, no. Come to Nashville, Red Lobster, Red Lobster, Red Lobster. Then I heard about that you just said, hey, I heard substitute teaching. Is hey, 70 day. bucks a day. Here's the problem. I don't know if this happened to you. Happened to me. I would be out till three, four in the morning yeah. trying to drum, have beers, hang, network. By the time I got a call at 8 a.m., 7 a.m., we need a substitute teacher for da da da, you know, Nashville, da da. I kept canceling, so they're like, they finally took me off the list, but also, 
I hated it. They didn't, oh. they did not, you know, I had classroom management skills and all this, but let me tell you something. If you're a sub, good luck with whatever skills you got managing the classroom. If, they're, if they don't want to hang out, I had trouble even telling them they could just hang out. Yeah, they, they spend 90% of the, you spend 90% of your time as a, as a substitute teacher with classroom management. You know, and back when I was going to, yeah, well, you know, my parents, they, they, uh, they spanked me. Right. And I turned out just fine. Um, actually, you know, you embrace it now. If you're a teacher nowadays, you have no tools in your back pocket to to keep classroom order. Not many. What are you saying? Do we need to spank our kids? Well, I just it's not going to happen. And it's it's yeah, it's lit- litigation everywhere. But that is so funny because it was it, it would this was early Internet. So this was like you've got mail. I mean, dial up. Right. So so the when you were waiting around to see if you were going to get a substitute teaching job for the next day, the, the call would come in on your landline and it would be, I, we have a job for you at Hillwood High School. And then, and then you would have to map quest the directions to get there, right? Yeah. Sounds like you're, you're, you're getting a call from Stephen Hawking. Yeah, totally. It was like Big Bang we Theory. getting a substitute teacher. We need a couple of pair of chinos, right? Yeah. And, oh. a brie- and a briefcase, and then you, you're in, in front of that classroom at 7 a.m., and hopefully the teacher left you a, a syllabus or a lesson plan. If not, you're like, okay, we're going to watch Contact seven <laughs> times today, right? Yeah, yeah and <laughs> that one, so that one went away for me really quickly. There's a, some disrespectful stuff that happened that taught me some lessons. You can paint the picture. I had the double earrings pierced going, you know, at oh, the yeah. double- you know, I love just doing that. I don't now. I've still got holes in them. I love showing them to my daughters because they're like, oh, I'm like, look, I'm going to be a hypocrite. But dad had them. You know, dad had the, the double thing since senior year in high school. I'm like, I'm not going to be a hypocrite, but there's certain things we're not doing. So I'm still doing the dad stuff. But that. How old are, how old are your daughters? Oh, uh, 16, uh, 17 and eight. Sorry, just turned wow. 17. Wow. Congrats. Yeah. I don't you have a 17 year old. Well, stepdaughter, but it's my daughter. Yeah. Oh, I gotcha. I gotcha. Yeah, yeah. You so, guys um, should exchange some witty dad jokes right now. Go. Every, every joke I say apparently is a dad joke, according to my daughters. There's my only thing. I, I think I'm pretty funny sometimes. What about you, Jim? Uh, hold on. Let me uh, Google some. Oh, I did it. <laughs> He's cheating. Hey, here it is. This was one of my favorite dad jokes that I made up. I said, What do you call? This is to Carmen, the eight year old. She's in the back seat. And I said, What do you call a skeleton that does not bathe? Just making it up. What do you call him? What? Smelleton. Now, that was my first, <laughs> that was my first bad joke. Then, here's the remarkable part of that horrible joke. I'm driving. I go, and all the rest of the family's like, yeah, whatever. My little daughter, same brain, I think. I go, what would be its nickname? And out of the blue, she just goes, Stinky Bones. And I go, you guys. You go. That's why you're my so, daughter. The uh, one joke. day my I come home, my wife is laughing her butt off. I said, "What?" She's like, "I heard the corniest dad joke, but it's got me laughing." I said, "Okay, lay it on me." She says, "A bear walks into a bar, sits down, and orders." Uh, you know, bartender comes up, says, "What are you gonna have?" I'm gonna have a grilled cheese. <laughs> and the bartender asks, "Why the big pause?" He goes. I'm a bear. <laughs> Can you please kick your own joke? Please give me a good touch. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, man. Oh, man, I'm losing it. I'm losing it. Jim I'm needs lo- to. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. He really needs to go. label those. They are labeled. This is getting around. Okay, I'll do gotcha. the Kelsey grammar falling I'll off the stage. Your pack, whatever. <laughs> hey, Johnny, I feel like having, a, having children becoming a dad like was a, had a really positive effect on you. Yeah, it's definitely awesome and difficult at the same time. I mean, they're they're upstairs right now, homeschooling, which is an absolute tough thing. Not on me, on Bridget, my wife, because and what I'm saying is I partake, but I'm not about to take credit for how awesome she's been with Carmen, our youngest one, especially. It's it's they don't need to be. They're signing into stuff. They're wow. Zoom this. They're I mean, she's eight. <clears throat> she should, you know, passwords. Yeah. It's like we're doing the quadratic formula today, Dad. I need help, and you're like crickets. By Daniels. Yeah, Jim and, and guys, that's my 17-year-old. She is a whiz, and she's like, oh, I just got done with, with you know, pre-calculus and all. Awesome, I yeah. never took that. Uh, yeah. The, um, <laughs> now, how did you meet Bridget? 
Up yeah. in Chicago? Yeah. No. no. Uh, and it's funny because I don't mind telling. The funny part is I think that my ex-wife believes that there was something going on during the marriage. And there never was. And I'm, I'm proud about that. The, the yeah. bottom line is I met Bridget in high school. She was a freshman when I was a junior. So yeah. while we were in high school in California, I grew up in Sacramento. And uh, I was like, who is this? You know, band class, she played trumpet. I'm, I literally was like on the, you know, some stand up, you know, concert snare or like, they're never good concert snares either. It's like a lame, you know, attempt at a concert snare. You're saying fiber skin. It was bad. I mean, no, there was, a, that would have been neat. I mean, I would have loved some, some actual name brand, but uh, she walked in and I was like, whoa. And immediately was attracted. There was an attraction. We're always buddies through yeah. high school, but never dated. If you call it what you call it in high school, we never, and uh, man, I really loved her then. And it was like this thing. And um, despite of us having, you know, you have the relationships in high school that are important. You have your senior year girlfriend, all those awesome life building things. But I always remember leaving school going, God damn, why didn't I, and pardon my mouth, we get it. Why didn't I yeah. hang out with me? Well, everything happens for a reason, man. I used to date yeah. the, uh, the French horn players because they would always be by the percussion section, you know? And they were always using their mouths. Yeah, no, lot, lots of, uh, lots of French horn players. There's some hit the drum again, Jim. I mean, yeah. Well, I was uh, actually going to say, you know, the moment that, that Bridget walked into the room, did you have the, uh, did you hear the music? Oh, yeah. Hey. Baby making music? There you are. Not quite then. I think that I have to admit, still kind of paranoid about stuff, didn't know what I was doing. In fact, we make the joke now, if we would have gone out, who knows if it would be how it is now. So uh, I did have, you. It, it wasn't quite the wah-wah pedal or whatever was just going there. It was more... It was more like the Lionel Richie Say You Say Me, if you got that soundtrack. It was a very, uh, pretty big. Nice. Love. Little Paul yeah. Lime was the uh, drummer for the soundtrack of your love affair. He was, and I'm sure glad, first of all, I'm not some big set case, but that stupid bridge to that song, what is up with that? We can talk about that later. Uh, <laughs> Is what, is up, what is the deal? Dude. What's the deal with the bridge? But I, it's all in seasons of your life. So how long have you guys been together now? We have been together since 2009. And nice. uh, you, you asked about, so it was California. She went to Northwestern in Evanston. And I was at Berkeley, then back home to Sacramento, then to Nashville to try to do the music thing. And also to try to work out things with my ex-wife, yes. uh, girlfriend at the time. And it did. We got married. And, and to this day, I think she's a, a good, good person. But uh, we haven't spoken since. Uh, it's all yeah, good. That and happens. I, yeah. And I, Jim, you could probably, I think, I don't want to uh, put you on the spot, probably remember I was pretty freaked out, like even at your, when we did the VidSig thing. Of just yeah, like, you, you were, uh, it was, a, you know, it's a rough time. I do recall that. But I mean, I'm glad we kind of gave you an evening of respite. You know, you definitely, yeah, got- Johnny. For me, that was 2015. So I, you know, I went through it, and that was my second time. You know, and you know, our band's got 13 marriages. It's not for the faint of heart. I mean, we're always just humping that bus, man. We yeah. some, sometimes feel more comfortable around each other than a lot of situations. Um, of course, this year, of course, was a nine. There's been a nine month break. Speaking you know. of wives, yeah, uh, you know, I've been married with Courtney to Courtney now 19 years. Congrats. And at one point, we were dating, and I was working for a radio station at the time, and um, we actually went backstage. Do you are you familiar? Are you do you keep in touch with the former drummer of Collective Soul? Yeah, I was going to say, what's the lineage of drummers oh. with Collective Soul? Every single one of them, guys. Do you? That's awesome. So yeah. whoever was holding down the chair in uh, like 98, 99, you uh, let him know I got a little message for him. You're, you're well, that's right. probably Shane. That's probably Shane Evans. Shane is your Who's yeah. first guy. What was the message, a good or bad one? Well, he, uh, we went backstage, and uh, he was totally just gunning on my wife. <laughs> well, she wasn't my wife at the time, and he's like, so uh, what are you doing after the show? And I'm like, dude, uh-huh. I'm right here. <laughs> right here. Not cool. That's hilarious. Okay. A lot of people, and I'm, hey. I mean, all I can say is that sometimes I'm like, uh oh, but then I'm like, you know what? Not me. So I'll just like, I'll yeah, please wasn't you. So who was <laughs> second? Was it was it Ryan or Ryan Hoyle or because Ryan? Uh, Ryan. So Shane and then um, and then Ryan Hoyle and yeah. I remember being at Soundcheck in the office. I'm sorry, at Harry McCarthy's Drum Paradise up above when we had that office, which was yeah. So, and I emailed Ryan because 
Now, I call it an industry drum lesson because I don't want to be condescending and act like I taught Ryan lessons. But Ryan was in, I believe the band was the Disco Knights or something like that, a cover band. In Dallas. Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. So then he moved to Nashville. He's like, hey, let's do a lesson. And it was more, it was only one meeting. I know what it was for. It was to network. He was just networking. And that's fine. It was like an industry connection lesson. You know what? So he did that. And then um, he got that, that gig. And I remember out of like envy. Not jealousy, because I was happy for him, but envy going, what is, you know, there's a big story about, I could never find out when uh, auditions were, I could never find out until somebody's like, I'm like, what are you doing here? And they're like, like right in front of the office, they're like, oh, I'm auditioning for Trisha Yearwood, open call. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? I'm in the on? same building, Who? how come you're not telling me, Trisha? Yeah, so he got that, and I, all I wrote him was, Ryan, that's so awesome, I heard you got a collective soul game, what a great band. And he wrote back, thanks so much, Johnny. Didn't speak to him until I, I was then in the in the band, and um, then it was uh, Cheney Brandon I just spoke to today. Cheney, and, huh? uh, everybody online can be so weird. They're like, "You guys must not like each other." Oh, and I remember like, I don't even mind saying it. One of the D drum reps or whatever, and it, it irritated me. I'll never forget. Cheney had been in the band, and then I, my first year starting, I'm down in Florida, and this D drum rep or Dean guitar rep or something was like in the catering and he's like Johnny Rab's in the band how's that gonna work and he's being all like I'm like dude how many lanyards are you wearing <laughs> like how many how's that gonna work oh yeah. man well then you showed him well no I didn't say that really that was in my mind I really know oh, he said <laughs> he said he's like how's that gonna work he's kind of dogging me and I get it he was like a buddy of Cheney's and and I'm like the ironic thing is Cheney and I are like completely friends, buddies. We've never had any negative, but everyone thought that there should be. So they kind of made this like, oh, you guys must hate each other and all. Now, drummers love each other, man. You got the gig. You, you, it was a season of your life. You got paid. You enjoyed yourself. We're for Instagram friends. Is he, is he a California guy? Where does he live? He lives in Atlanta. Oh, Atlanta. Okay, great. He lives in Atlanta. And uh, I'll never forget that same guy from Dean and again he might not be with Dean so I know I keep saying the company but I, he was it was cool factor 20 and, he, and he's like man do you realize how many hits they have and I was so pissed off that he was like condescending like I was gonna have a struggle with the show that I went no I have no idea not <laughs> and he took it seriously he's like dude they've got, I'm like and oh so it's just it was a drag at the beginning kind of the ribbing and the kind of like expectation yeah. That I that we hated each other and Ryan Ryan and I must be enemies and I I met Ryan in those early days when you did too and I ended up hanging out a couple times with him in his basement he was renting this house and the entire basement was all these drum sets and electronic drums and and he you know it's really it taught me a lesson because I think he loved the he really was a fan of the band and he knew all the songs and so somehow you know you reap what you sow this opportunity came his way I don't know how it happened but I mean he was ready for it oh he's ready for it and he he listen to the listen to the albums and then you dean's band um magnets and ghosts that's uh him and ryan and another ryan uh producer and dean's buddy and um uh, ryan protesta and uh those albums are remarkable and ryan hoyle's you know look i like to i have studio in the, behind the wall here great we all have studios i'm going to give complete props to ryan the stuff he gets done in his studio in la is remarkable he sounds fantastic. And I saw him in L.A. And we've talked on the phone from me from the bus to him. And I'm a fan. Yeah. I'm a fan of every drummer. Every drummer that's been in the band, obviously. So when did you guys put out this? Oh, 2015. See what you started by continuing. Is that the one? Is that the one you're on? So that. Yeah. We've done there more. We've, there's more. We've done. And it's not like. A, but there, we did that first. That was the first studio one. And then right. uh, from, from there. Pretty proud right. of. The live, which is called Collective Soul Live, it's like a double, you know, awesome, long. like Kiss Live, double disc, cool. yeah. Cool. And then uh, uh, Blood, which was a couple of years ago, and then we have like two more in the can, if you will. And really, and, yeah. I'm going to crank those up, Johnny, because, you know, I was so excited about you and me catching up in a, on a, in a public forum, but I, I, I have yet to listen to it, but I know it's going to be fantastic. But, you know, for all my guests, I do a deep dive on YouTube, and I was uncovering all these, uh, you know, rolling videos and, like, music store clinics and stuff. And the rolling thing, that always fascinated me. 
um, you became like an international clinician for them, like all the continents and all the countries. And you must have eaten all sorts of fun food and experienced great things. Did that relationship start when you were a contestant for the Roland competition? Is that how that happened? No, it happened, it, it happened because of uh, um, going to NAM all the time, and and um, the stick company was going, and then Ed Sargent uh, was at a time in my life I didn't really feel like I needed a personal. I don't have a manager now, uh, and I didn't feel like I needed one then. That doesn't mean I'm I'm so great. It just means what it means. I just I don't I'm it's, I'm fine. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I was especially then I'm like yeah I don't know if I need a manager, but he was my manager. And he was also the president of the Johnny Rabbit Drumsticks. Yeah, that's and right. He, yeah, and he knew Steve Fisher. And Fisher was in charge of Roland. Yeah. And the way it started was I wanted to purchase a V-drum kit um, from Roland. And then the founder of, uh, well, no, then Steve loaned me a little bit of gear. And then I, I wrote the drum and bass book using some of the gear and some of the acoustic gear. And then the next thing I know, he goes, would you like to come to like U.S., uh, Southern California, so USC area, uh, and do like this hybrid Roland day, this V-drum day? Yeah. And Mr. K was there. That's the founder of Roland. And he basically went up to Steve Affer and goes, who was the guy that did the hand sonic mixed with the drums and the stuff? And, uh, and then from there, there was a slowly just contracts. It was like went from 30 days a year to... My max was 75 days a year. I did it for like 12, between 12 and 15 years and stopped about five years ago. Steve's now with the Yamaha. Right. But, but I can tell you that I didn't know what, if, if there was, in fact, I thought it was a little bit of a nail in the coffin of touring or getting an artist gig or, or being known for more than just a clinician salesperson. Cause it really, I heard people talking being like, yeah, I like him, but look, he's wearing that Roland shirt. He's just he's just like a mop salesman, and I'm like, I get it. Well, you were always at the, you, I mean, you were a staple of the conventions, and people would be like drawn, like, you know, to to you playing, and you'd have the headset mic, and you, you'd be educating. And you're like, oh, you like that? Well, we could tune it, and then let's add this, and let's layer this, and then like, you're great, man. That's your communication skills, and where your music education background, you know, comes. Are you still using the products, or did you go over to Yamaha? No, there's no. I have no. Um, affiliation with the electronic company. I tried to work things out with Roland um, and they're a great company and I love their gear. And that's not just for this. That's just, it is reality. I'm still friends with it. They just didn't want to make some changes that um, I was looking for. Sure. And, uh, I also at the time um, took a chance on infused, which was the Mapex's kind of, and I love the concept, unfortunately, and it, it was a really cool concept, but unfortunately it didn't get flushed up, flushed out enough to where it became a viable uh, staple in electronic drums. And so that was kind of the, the it was my doing that I went to go try this make. I didn't have a drum, uh, acoustic drum endorsement since my DW days. And um, I was gonna go try it. So Russ Miller is a good friend of mine, still a great friend of mine. So I love yeah. Russ. We're doing stuff together, you, you know you know that. And uh, it didn't work, the Mapex, it's okay, but it just, it, it you know, unfortunately, Joe Hibbs passed away. Um, yeah. And uh, so then I went back after, I know it was all over the place, but after DW, I quit for many reasons. I decided no endorsement, meaning no drum endorsement, because I started realizing why not play the stuff that I might would buy. And I'm not saying I wouldn't buy DW. I'm just saying, you know. Whatever you want to buy. Yeah, whatever you play, what you whatever you want. That was my theory. And I had one successful clinic at Dana Bentley's shop. And that, oh, I love it, yeah. And and he let me come in with no endorsement. I'm like, look, I still use Meinl and Remo and my own sticks and, and some other small companies or whatever, but what drum set do you want me to play at the clinic tonight? And it was the cool approach. And he was like, man, this is kind of cool. You don't have to like, you can look across the room. And I was I'm like, look at that Tama kid. That's killer. That's look. awesome, man. That's a cool idea. So it was pretty cool. Um, Long-winded story. Uh, yeah, that's how I met Steve, and that relationship lasted quite a long time. And it was not a negative me leaving Roland, but everyone that was on that team, from Tim Root to Mike Snyder to myself, David Garza, and I mean, I'm, I'm missing. And Steve Fisher, um, kind of the core team. We go to Japan all the time, China. Um, 
everyone kind of has now gone and done their own things and have their own. Uh, yeah, Drew, Drew Armantrout was the guy that signed sure. me, and now sure. he's no longer with the company. So Pat Kennedy is there. It's just you know those jobs. It's just a it's just a thing that happens in our industry. There is a lot of turnover. And speaking of that, by no means do I mean to miss out on Drew. All of us were buddies. Drew was part of that first gang of folks. Yeah, I miss him, man. You know what's so sad about it is looking and now it's okay, but it, it really is kind of like a, like a sad thing. Once you're gone from a place, it's almost that time is stamped and you're you're gone. What I mean is there's videos out, but I don't think anyone knows. Does that make sense? I thought that thing sure. was going to always be, be my thing. No, no, dude. Like you have the, too much. Uh, you have too much going for you. I mean, Jim will agree. I mean, you're not going to get the collective soul gig unless you can go bing ga, bing bing ga for three and a half minutes. But then, but then you invented the rhythm saw, and you could do a one-handed roll, and then you could be an educator and do drum and bass. And I got to tell you, as an inventor, your drum bowl, you know the. the yeah. The little it's like a, it's like a it's like a handle on a small symbol. So all those yeah, all those cats that 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 will take their splash symbol and they'll like duct tape it to their little piccolo snare drum to get that whap like a, a hand clap. So here's a industry secret for anybody who's bought their records, but both the Thompson Square records that were very gridded pop style country records, I use that drumble constantly to get like alternative s snare sounds and wow. like a clappy kind of thing. So. You were really part of my stick bag cartage rig for, I mean, still to this day, but a good decade. Well, dude, that's awesome. In fact, happy to announce that hopefully soon there'll be some fun stuff with some alterations on the drumble that are going to be like a personal thing uh, with mine, I'm hoping. And uh, it seems like stuff's in the works for that. I love it. I used to get really frustrated when I would see folks kind of just and it's fine. It's not like I invent, I understand at this point in life, people put symbols on drums. Abel Boyle Jr. was like, I put this symbol on a drum to make reggae, this reggae track. I was like, whoa. So it's not like it came out of nowhere, but the handle idea has, has brought some unique tones and some fun. So I love it. And it, I always wanted to have my own sound and try my best to still push that way. Sure. You know, yeah. I, I've always found a yeah. sort of like symbol placement. You know, if they had something on a stand that could boom over and bring the symbol closer to me, that would be a really good invention. Be the symbol closer to you? Any symbol. Yeah. yeah. I think that exists, Rick. You don't like, you can't get your placement exactly the way you want it or what? Yeah. Like, a, you know, so it booms over. I knew you're screwing around, Jim. <laughs> oh, I'm just getting it right now because I'm slow. You think I would know the guy after 15 I years. Know. <laughs> it's like, come on. So it booms over. Yeah, you know, so it booms over. Christ. If we can get on that, that would be great. The Rich Redmond Show will be right back. Those who are self-employed, especially musicians, think homeownership is unattainable. For Bruce Klein, it took seven years to purchase his first home as a self-employed working musician. But once he did, man, was it satisfying. So he decided he wanted to help other musicians and creatives gain that same satisfaction. Bruce earned his lending license and is now helping people avoid the mistakes he made on his seven-year journey. If you're a self-employed musician, he can help. Go to musiciansmortgage.com, powered by Movement Mortgage. Bruce Klein, NMLS, number 1465948. Movement Mortgage supports equal housing opportunity. NMLS, number 39179. NMLS, consumeraccess.org. Henry Ford once said that if you need a machine and don't buy it, then you will ultimately find that you have paid for it and don't have it. Nothing could be truer about energy-efficient LED lighting in your business. At Big Dot Lighting, we can show you how a portion of your savings from a commercial LED lighting upgrade will be paid for in hardly any time at all. Until then, you're paying for them anyway. Book a no-cost lighting energy assessment with Big Dot Lighting. At least 30% of your utility bill is waiting to be saved. Go to BigDotLighting.com. Are you a drummer looking to expand your drumming vocabulary or take your career to the next level? You can connect with me for one-on-one -on -one virtual lessons and consultations that are now 30% off. I cover topics like styles, reading music, the Nashville number system, charting, music business 101, and career guidance. Simply send me an email at booking at richredmond.com to schedule. And for more information on all of my products and services, visit richredmond.com. This is the Rich Redman Show.
How bright are these lights? Am I just like glowing? No, you're you're killing. What I'm what I'm learning from my guests right now is that like I gotta I gotta step up my lighting game in this location. Ugh. Jim and I used to do this show um, pre pandemic <laughs> in in a real place, and we all sat together and drank coffee and everything. Yeah. And you know, we could do your show socially distanced. I have the facilities. And we'll 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 just wait till this whole thing goes away. Oh my god. <laughs> Hey guys, yeah. I tell you, I, Rich, thank you for that. And guys, like, like it's actually I'm not joking around. I just I have it because I always have one around. It's here, dude. That's, but yeah, the thing, what the cool thing about it is that you can have an open sound and then into the claps like ding, ding, boom, ding, yes. ding, yep. ding, ding, yeah. and then you could like muffle and place it in different spots. It's a, mm -hmm. it's badass, dude. No, I, dude, I appreciate it. And you know, I was just telling Bridget about content building. I feel like I was like way ahead of my, my, not my time, but ahead of times. Yes. But then it's always like technology was not ready. And I'm sure you've had the same thing. Concept for an online drum, drum school, 2000. Couldn't do, you couldn't really capture that great of video for internet. Now it's a joke. You can do it with your phone, yeah. but I'm still guilty because I need to catch up. So now I'm trying to, not freak out. Well, I was going to ask, from the entrepreneurial aspect, which you've always had. Yeah. You know, and you continue to kind of chase it. Uh, what yeah. I would have asked you back in the day is, what are your goals? What are your aspirations? What do you want to, if you had to look back on your life, you're on your deathbed. Man, I'm glad I really did this. You know, I mean, what? what is the big hairy nice, audacious Nice. Goal? Awesome. Thank you for the question. And short answer would be, you know, the stick company still exists and, and I'm happy about it. Partnered with, with Troy Dares and we're good buddies. He's been, taught me a lot and we're, we're working on that. And Rhythm saw it, you know, so manufacturing of the, of the sticks and getting that back out there um, would be one of the goals. The other goal is, again, the drumble thing to push that further just because I do feel like it was like a sound that was, and now I'm hearing new sounds and all that. So the drumble thing, more inventions, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, my own curriculum kind of taking away the publishing from uh, the big publishers. No disrespect to them, it's been great. Getting back my own publishing and making that happen. And then doing the online school, if you will. And again, nothing new, I get it, but just whoever would like to take from me, I would like it to be documented in long-term, meaning like, you know, some of this stuff I'm doing is like long-term play along with me and some of his short little clips. Rich, you and I were talking about this. Yeah. Everyone's doing it, and I think there's room for everybody. I would just really want to get this stuff documented because I've made a lot of, in hindsight, mistakes of being like, I trust you, partner person. And then they're like, I'm pulling the plug, drummer guy. And so. <laughs> but I mean, with the legalities of that thing, did you have like operating agreements in place and all that stuff? Or Yeah, in some. Kind of handshakes. No, no, good, good question. I've had the most frustrating times with thinking I had stuff set up correctly. Hmm. I'm at 48 years old right now. I'll tell you, just now have got stuff to where I understand like NDAs better and, you know, correct contracts. So, no, unfortunately, there could be a book written on the wrong contracts signed with people or lack of. Uh, the trust thing is tough. The whole, like, I'm going to shake your hand. And I recently had one happen where it was an invention and totally broke my own rule. I was like, I'll, I'll you know, got to prototyping stage and everything. And, Unfortunately, the person's like, you know what? I don't really feel like I'm going to keep doing this. I'm like, e wow, you got it. <laughs> totally dead in the water. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, uh, how does that work as an inventor? I mean, you see the ads late at night, inventorhelp.com, and there's like the caveman and he's making the wheel. So wheel. you have a concept, you make a prototype. And then as far as like the legalities of getting it uh, covered, you know, uh, how do you do that? Thing, it's, it's finding the integrous people to partner with. And that's, that's the tough part. Well, both what you're saying is absolutely true. And I don't know why people will, it's so funny. They tell you to get contracts and then you get a person that says, I'm not signing that contract. It's such a funny double-edged sword. If you, if you think contract means that you don't trust me, that's, I hear that all the time. Or man, I, I need it. You know, I'm not doing contracts. I'm trustworthy. Or it's so weird. I've heard both. Like, it's so silly to get a contract. You should just trust the person. If you, if you're, and I'm like, no, I have seen too many times firsthand. And I'll never forget then the, uh, the offended person of like an NDA. I'm like, can we just do an NDA to make sure we're covered? And unfortunately, uh, that last thing I told you about was because the person refused to do an NDA. 
or, or thought it was too legal. And then the whole thing just went south. And I'm like, you gotta be kidding. So something was wrong there, red flag. Uh, and, and Jim, both of you guys were asking how, a lot of them, you know, there's licensing and I have to be careful of that too. It's like, if you license something, you can kind of get the short end of the stick, no pun intended, but, but I feel like quick, you know, I've learned a lot from Troy and I think quick provisional patents can help maybe. Um, but then you also have to realize what, what is the, like, should you even start on some of these inventions? Like that's the thing with Troy that I've really enjoyed. I'll say something that's non-drumming to him. And he's like, that's a pretty cool idea. And then, you know, should we even start on this? Like, what's the end game for this thing? Because so, the there's there's tons of costs involved with these patents and lawyers, right? Yeah. The rhythm saw is patented. And thank God I was able to get that back from, I won't even name the company, but to get it back. Uh, Cause for a while I was not, and I was really freaked out. Um, got it back. And, Yes, it is. You know, you got 10,000 up to 20 grand, you know, floating across the table just to kind of have a drawing and have somebody still steal it. I mean, it was made in China, meaning I've seen people send me videos being like, look at your rhythm saw done in China. And then another stick company, a uh, smaller company did it. And they're like, that's not what that's for. That's a handle. And I'm like, uh, it's right. the AS show. Like, I, nightmares uh all right so the lesson the, kids out there is that yeah movie like like the founder have you ever seen that movie oh mcdonald's yeah yeah oh, yes you watch it? yes is that kind of i mean that that movie is is about a guy who's kept on trying and trying it didn't hit until he was in his 50s yeah you know so i mean that ought to give us gives all of us hope it's all hopefully because we're becoming men of a certain age i mean i'm the oldest on the panel here you know not by much <laughs> Well, I mean, I mean, Jim, you're only like, 45 years old, buddy. I mean, you know, five oh, years is on. a long time. Five years behind you. It's not that far. The We're all in the same dang range. Yeah, That's we right. are. You know, I look the oldest out of all of you. So anyway, I got that going for me. Colonel Sanders was the same situation. He didn't, I thought we were going to just call Rich Colonel Sanders. What? <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. What was up with yeah, Colonel Sanders was the same way. It was like a late life yeah, blossoming. Mm-hmm. Colonel of chicken. I mean, People he, love chicken and they love hamburger. It sounds really good because, you know, I'm, I'm hungry right now. It sounds really, really, really good. I tell you, well, you just guys said something. <laughs> uh, <laughs> age thing. Are you, are, you feeling, are you feeling good from the drums? Because drummers are always, we look at least 10 years younger than everyone else because we get to take out all this passion and anger on these inanimate objects and we love our jobs so that when you love your life it just affects everything yeah i do I love them yeah go I ahead love the metal drummers that we talk to we talked to john tempesta and charlie benante yeah and they're the most chill guys and we asked about the backstage experience they're like oh man everybody's just chilled out I'm like yeah because you get all your aggressions out for an hour and a half up on stage yeah <laughs> Yeah, I mean those guys. Uh, I I love the drums. Um, I've just realized what you just said, Jim, about Colonel Sanders or about any of the guys that guys, women, anybody don't stop. Because believe me, there's times I'm like I'm done. I'm done. I am not going to try to do anything else. I am not going to put videos out. I'm not going to try to come up with a, a, a book concept. Or but then I go, yeah, why not? Because then you said earlier, I don't want to be looking back if I don't have a sudden death. If it's like a long, yeah. like live long, I don't want to look back and go, dang, I should have, uh, I should have tried let that. Me, let me yeah. guess, okay, yeah, yeah. for both of you guys, and I got the ideas already in the chamber, I'm going to fire them at you. For both of you guys, it's kind of a, uh, well, somebody else is already doing that. Why should I even try? Because so and so is already doing my idea, right? Sure. Yeah. Sometimes, Jim, and, and I've been like scolded before. Yeah. by one person, uh, but I can't help myself. I'm also quite, for, for saying what I'm about to say next, I know I shouldn't look back and be like, dude, you're ripping me off. Wow, you're ripping me off. But there's certain things I feel ripped off a little bit, so I try to get rid of that jadedness that I have of being ripped off because then I'm the bad guy. If I say, that dude ripped me off, everyone's mm-hmm. going to attack and go, dude, you're jealous. That's blah, blah, blah. So I, I'm aware of who you're talking about. No, yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the, other as, the other aspect of this is like Rich and I have had this conversation before. I said, why don't you take all your transcripts from over the years, yeah. all the way you notate and everything and how you come up with your drum charts, 
and put it out as a book. Put it out. Oh, as that's a happening book. for sure. Well, it should. It should. And you, yeah. you had said to me, well, you know, Jim Riley's done it and so and so's done it. I said, but no, but you haven't done it. Okay. Great. That's the thing. Great motivation, that- Jim. Yeah. yeah, you, yeah I mean, that's it. Yeah. Everybody, you know, well, I'm, I'm going to go buy a car. Well, I'm going to go sell cars. Well, why, why should you sell cars? Because so-and-so does it and so-and-so does it. Because so, you can do it. No, that's, oh, it. No. Yeah. that's huge. And in fact, that's kind of what's, thank you for saying that because I'm sure Rich, you agree. It's like, I'm not trying to be jaded. I'm getting protective of some, of some stuff just because I'm like, oh, because they've actually, the, the folks have capitalized. But I am planning on Another friend told me, like how you just said, so you did that, you did that, you did that. I'm like, yeah. And they're like, what are you doing with it right now? And I'm like, oh, bing bong. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, my, uh, when I, (laughs) I'm going to do the, this like little, you know, Jason Aldean, um, do all Play, your songs. It's going to be a playbook, which is basically like I'm going to show the number chart that I received at the session at 10 a.m. I'm going to show the what what I marked on the number chart, and then I'm going to have a a through composed uh, transcription of what I played on that session. So it'll be like uh, whatever our body of work is, 140 here's, here's songs or something like here's that. How, if this is all of a sudden. Awesome. Just, I'm getting sparking of imaginations here. Okay? <laughs> Put out just a basic 10 of, you know, the hits that you've been on, a myriad of different bands, different styles, maybe 20, right? Sure. Yeah, yeah. And then put out, you know, here is the first offering. You can download these for four ninety nine or whatever it is. Yep. And it's a video of you going over it, exactly how you came up with it. Here's the chart, how it is. Uh, here it is downloadable. You can download it right to the Rich Redmond app, the pay yep. part of it. So you can actually, they can bring it up to their phone or their iPad or whatever. And then take requests. Okay. Yeah, that's cool. What, yeah. What would you have me transcribe in my way and teach you how to do in a virtual manner? And then you get requests and you take the ones you put those out as offerings. You see I what love, I'm saying? I love the idea. You know, the, the thing is, is that anything worth doing, you want to do it at a high level and it just takes time. You know, it just takes you time. Just start it. with the 20. Start with the 20. Yeah. Okay. Work it in. You, you know, get somebody to do an app for you, finance it if you have to, and then just get it out there, dude. I mean, you, if somebody, if you do that and you're providing different ways that you chart out songs and the, your methodology and your uh, shorthand and everything that you do, like we did with the, um, the show tune that we did, the, um, Dear Evan Hansen. Dear Evan Hansen, okay, you do that across all different spectrums and everything, and you start putting that stuff out on YouTube, put some freebies out there. Just do 20, yeah. start with 2021, 20. Jim. I'm going to do it for you, buddy. Now, you're, this is interesting because Johnny has – well, okay, Johnny, as I'm sure, experienced this, but there was a company that financed and built a Rich Redmond app. Mm-hmm. It was not sticky because I don't well, you know, know if a drummer problem did it solve? needs an app. No, no. But what problem does it solve? That's the question you always start with. What well, there, we, yeah, yeah. Their angle was what like, my problem? this is an all in one place where you can see pictures, videos, contact rich Who and cares? see. Yeah, I know. Who cares? Well, hang on. Okay. Hang on. The only thing I'll add, though, having done Nashville number system there and, and things like that, I think that's going to be a solid thing for you, Rich, because a lot of people uh, I love doing that. I love it. I'm not in Nashville. You're still in Nashville. And I think them seeing from the beginning to then the changes, markings, and then the outcome is pretty cool because we do have some play, if you will, mm-hmm. on those charts. Cause it doesn't say like kick must be on one and the E of four. No, You're, it's, you know, it's very numbers. It's up to us. One, yeah. four, 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 four. As you know, one, and I'm, I'm, I'm looking yeah. at it, Rich, from a layman. Okay. I'm a hobbyist drummer. <clears throat> and when you were going over the deer and Evan Hansen, it was fascinating to watch for me. Well, I it's think the fascination comes from the fact that, Johnny, you would probably agree with me, every working drummer out there that does sessions has some sort of shorthand to have a cheat chart or to help them get through. But the prerequisite is, what's the good of having the chart if you can't write any ryth- like specific rhythmic figures out? And so there's a lot of drummers that they can't read rhythm, so then they have a they can't come up with their shorthand because they haven't done the basics, which is learn the value of quarters, eighths, triplets, and sixteenths. Right. This goes back. I know you're going to be like, "What?" But like, you and I both had demo cassette tapes. Yes, we did. I had one. You had one. I brought one, and it I have fantastic. Here says all the styles. I had a lot of styles on mine. Yeah. The reason I bring that up is 
the versatility matters in as a drummer. And you, if you threw a chart in front of me, you're going to have a better idea right off the bat because you've been keeping doing it. I totally get it. I've done some sessions in Nashville. I totally get it and I love it. There's nothing more that feels to me good about when you're like, I don't understand that national number thing. I'm like, I totally do. Like, I mean, it's like, it's such a neat code for getting stuff done. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not necessarily the guy that can listen right away and actually do what some of the stud guitar or piano players where they're like, oh, that's one, one, two, minor, da, da. But I love the- So fast, yeah. Yeah. You have the three things, what we're talking about here with this idea, and I would actually lock this down if I were you. It's you, okay? It's the fact that you guys have the, you, you have the equity, the name equity. It will be on a digital platform, okay? And it's completely evergreen. Is that it is sense? completely evergreen. So for Johnny, he could transcribe um, all of the songs that he's recorded with Collective Soul. Mm-hmm. And you could even go back and say, way. this is how it was presented to me in the, in the studio, or this came from a pre-production demo tape on GarageBand. And then over the course of two hours, we worked out, we came up with the kick drum pattern. I was told to keep the, the fills very Motown. Y- you know what I mean? You go through the whole thing. You know, I don't know. Right. But well, I mean, it, all of a sudden, if you if if this becomes like a, a membership type of offering, right, mm-hmm. where they're a part of the Rich Redmond um, uh, song, you got to keep this about JohnnyRap dot com, buddy. Come on, no, I'm saying, but you know, we're, we're conversation that kind of comes in, all, all, all this kind of stuff. Yeah. You know, the, the, you know how I am, Rich. I I throw stuff against the wall. I know you do. That is, there's there's something there that you got to work with. Okay, well, it, it's on the to do list, right, Johnny? Hmm. Well, I, let's just face this. You said something, and Jim, great ideas. Time. I was literally up in the kitchen earlier and looking out the window. I love birds, so I'm a crazy-ass bird feeder. And I'm looking at them, and I go, God dang it. It's in my mind. If I could go bing, and that stuff would be out, all the stuff would be out. But you just nailed it. Time. Time. It's not just going in and doing content. It's mixing the audio of the content what were the right clips of the video we all have these tools i mean like i know we make jokes about my lights i've got two lights here that i guarantee you that most people don't think about doing we do think about it we are now i've got studio monitors there i've got a big screen tv over there so people on this couch can look at pro tools slash logic there's that yeah. light no. yes <laughs> yes so I have no light and, you know and then there's microphones jim you're speaking into that microphone Rich, you're doing a microphone. I'm trying to get my act together on which mic I have. I'm going to start using like you guys are using when I start to do some interviews that I want to work on. Sure. It is a, is a all-in-one, and I'm, making, I'm not making light of it. It's all-in-one expectation of us now to understand how to operate a little bit of Pro Tools or Logic, understand some sort of here's how a mic operates, here's how videos are edited. So it's a funny, I love it, but it is really about time and time management. And I'm working on that. Yeah. <laughs> See, that, that the way you overcome, I understand what you're saying. And yeah. Rich has heard me say this many, 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 many times. Yep. Just, you don't have to get it right. You just got to get going. Okay. Mark, and, that's Mark. and sitting down with literally how you're framed right now with a camera over a sheet of paper and you just basically switch between the two. That's it. That's all you need. That's, that's a very, you know what? Not even joking. I had this idea of doing some basic teaching, and I'm like, exactly what you just said. You got the, the just write the stuff out here. So you basically notate, telling people how to, and kind of my approach. I'm like, oh, I need this fancy whiteboard or e e whiteboard. It's like maybe, but not really. It's like yeah, that, that could be down the road. Yeah, just start. It's a good point. Telling yeah. anybody that's listening, just start. You know what I mean? Just we 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 shot the uh, the dear Evan Hansen thing. I literally held my phone up and shot his rich getting a shorthand, and we were on a Mevo camera that we use for the podcast. Yeah, I love it. Well, yeah, you don't have to have the entire journey figured out. You just got to take that first step, right? Which is why you know Johnny and I are sitting here, and you're sitting here. You know, Jim, we're like you know at that certain age, we have our success stories. We're looking back, but not wanting to be one to pat ourselves on the shoulder. We want to figure out what our what our what is our next twenty years going to look like creatively. We're yeah. not done, but, guys. We, Rich, we've sat together in Nashville at a Promark dinner and had a blast talking, laughing being excited we're in the game and something's different since then and all i mean by that is you said our, we're on fire 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 i still think we love what each other what we do for a living but there's a little bit of calm now and a little bit of like almost like reality nerves for me i'm like this is amazing but what what's the now i'm trying to figure out what's the end game of yeah. all of it you know yeah 
Do you have any uh, any idea of how long the band is going to go? Like, is there ever talk like, you know, we're going to do another five, guys. Let's do five years. Like, or is uh, it just... I got you. I got you. Not yet. It's always been from Ed that he, he will do it until he cannot. I well, uh, that is awesome. Well, Jim, nope. Jim's in, Jim's swimming with the sharks, man. He's in. The, he's got his big boy bands on because you know he like he's he's the co-owner of this some huge building. You know they, you know he's oh he owns a giant commercial facility now, and I respect the fact that Jim's in a position now where when this business goes and down the line it gets evaluated and potentially sold, yeah. Jim is going to be on a beach with a swaying palm tree, okay. and, a, and and a margarita. And I love that you guys have no idea. And Jim, congrats. But I would admit, you're not going to see some weird car. Like, wow, look at Rab's dumb Lamborghini he has. You know what I mean? And that's cool if that's somebody's goal. But what you, what I want to be able to do is have the comfort of, if I've you know, got the Starbucks coffee habit, just go, it doesn't matter. I'm, I can afford it. Or like, hey, I love having restaurant going to restaurants yeah that's it just the comfort of going or kids in college wouldn't that be cool so we can substitute the word beach with like yeah you know financial freedom freedom half two days are over when your one two days are here yeah 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 yeah. that's hey johnny you know what i i feel like this might end up being your favorite part of the show because i know it's jim's (laughs) favorite part of the show it's where we generate a random question Okay. It's the random question, random question, random question of the day. Nice. It's a random question. It literally is just a random question. I'm okay. going to hit the next question button here and come up with a random question. <laughs> Love it, what, what kinds of things do you like to cook or are good at cooking? That's a great question. <laughs> I, am, I am good at... Um, like these chicken enchiladas. I love Mexican food and I can do a pretty mean and, and that and straight up omelets and eggs. And I'm quick. I feel like I'm at Denny's. I can rip that apart quick. There you go. Nice. You know, when, when we did this live, Rich used to make me lunch and it was really nice. It was, it was like, he could whip up a really good meal. Well, it's, it's kind of like more like reheating and they, they, my girlfriend calls it judging. You judge it up. So I would go get these healthy pre-packed like paleo meals, like yep. chicken, Brussels sprouts and like some broccoli and then it's frozen. And so I would defrost it and I would put it in a pan, add some olive oil to it, make it a little bit more Mediterranean and give it to Jim and he would devour it. Now his uh-huh. wife is a killer cook. My girlfriend's a killer cook, but Johnny, I agree with you on the eggs. I feel like eggs are man's perfect food, and it's great for, like, starving bachelors, you know? You just make it. Yeah, I admit that, you know, definitely happily married, and I'm still egging it down. I mean, I'm, I'm egging the egging, and it's it's so fast. The only thing that sucks about eggs is you're like, you're so good, and then there's a moment where you're like, I'm eating too many eggs. These aren't that good. Well, uh, are, you doing, are you doing the whites, uh, just the egg whites? Are you scrambling? What are you doing? I'm, I'm definitely have never done. I have before done those weird carton eggs. No problem with them, uh, but mainly the uh, just the egg. You know, just rocking sunny side up or yeah. over yeah. Them, or an omelet. Um, I'm not so hot. I'm, I'm you know when I try to flip the omelet, I'm not always nailing it. But you know, just the whole egg. I, I, I can eat like. And the sad part is I can eat like eight or like six, which yeah. is probably great. But I, I like them. Easy. Yeah. Are you, and yeah, and I agree on the coffee thing. I got to warm this thing up. Jim and I are getting ready to go into our third podcast that they were going to be interviewing a uh, a uh, comedic actor. So, uh, so right from Johnny Rab, who's very funny, and before you, Harry Myrie, who's very funny. We got to say that, hi to Harry. We're going to say hi to Harry. We got to say hi to ha- Harry. If you're out running at three a.m., hello. It's your shout out. Hey, Harry, thanks for exercising to our madness. We appreciate it. Yeah, we totally really, everyone out there, we appreciate all the support. You know, uh, you Jim know, and if I. You want, yeah. If you want your own shout out, uh, hit us up at the Rich Redmond Show at gmail.com. We'll yeah, for sure. Up. That's fantastic, dudes. Thanks for having me. Uh, Johnny, you look so good, man. Thanks for doing it. Well, these lights, you know, I don't know what. <laughs> you going. look good. Thank you. Don't oh. worry about the lights. Looking great, lights. man. If you guys are just consuming this with your ear holes, Jim, uh, Johnny is on a, a nice couch. He's got a nice backdrop. He's wearing a, a black V-neck, which is like standard fare for a musician. And he's got a, like a faded black jean jacket. It looks yeah. great. 
Thank you, buddy. Looking great. Johnny, everyone keep in touch with Johnny. He's, he's a sitting duck on the internet. JohnnyRab.com, R-A-B-B.com. When the world comes back around, go see Collective Soul Live. Support their last three or four records. That's Johnny playing on it. Johnny, appreciate it, man. Yeah, thank you both. Both you guys rock. Jim and Rich, thanks for having me. You guys rule. Thank you both. Jim, Je- Je- wow, we appreciate you, buddy. Your time and talent, man. This show would not happen without you. And to all the listeners out there, we appreciate you. Be sure to subscribe, share, rate, and review. It really helps us keep coming back for the good stuff. We'll see you next time. Johnny, thanks, man. This has been The Rich Redman Show. Subscribe, rate, and follow along at richredman.com.